we have discussed how motion is described in last week. We have reference frame and we set coordinates on it. We use particle as a model to describe translational motion. And then we have position vectors. As the particle moves, its position changes. In order to know how fast an object moves, we define the speed and velocity. Just as velocity describes the rate of change of position with time, we defined another vector quantity, acceleration, which describes the rate of change in velocity with time. Now, we should answer the question of why objects move as they do. What makes an object at rest begin to move? Why does the moon always move in an elliptical orbit and never stop? What causes an object to accelerate or decelerate? We know the answer is force. Today, we talk about Chapter 4, Newton's Law. If an object is at rest, to start it moving requires a force, that is, to accelerate it from zero velocity to a non-zero velocity. For an object already moving, if you want to change its velocity, either in direction or in magnitude, again, a force is required. In other words, a force is required to accelerate an object. In our daily life, we experience contact forces like push, pull, press, friction force, elastic force, etc. These forces involve physical contact between two objects. Other examples of contact forces are the force exerted by gas molecules on the walls of a container and the force exerted by your feet on the floor. Another class of forces known as field forces does not involve physical contact between two objects. These forces act through empty space. The gravitational force of Attraction between two objects with mass is an example of this class of force. The gravitational force keeps objects bound to the Earth and the planets in orbit around the Sun. Another common field force is the electric forces that one electric charge exerts on another. As an example, these charges might be those of the electron and proton that forms a hydrogen atom. A third example of field force is the force a magnet bar exerts on a piece of iron. When examined at the atomic level, all the forces we classify as contact forces turn out to be caused by electric field forces. The known fundamental forces in nature are all field forces. 1. Gravitational forces between objects. 2. Electromagnetic forces between electric charges. 3. Strong forces between subatomic particles and four, weak forces that arise in certain radioactive decay processes. Session two, summary of Newton's laws. Newton's first law of motion is close to Galileo's conclusion of his observation of motion. It states that every object continues in its state of rest or of uniform speed in a straight line as long as net force acts on it. 
the tendency of an object to maintain its state of rest or of uniform motion in a straight line is called inertia. If no force acts on an object, then the object's velocity cannot change. The object cannot accelerate. So, Newton's first law is often called the law of inertia. Newton's first law does not hold in every reference frame. For example, if your reference frame is fixed in a car and the car accelerates, an object such as a cup resting in the car may begin to move toward you. The cup accelerated toward you, but neither you nor anything else exert a force on the cup in that direction. Reference frames in which Newton's first law does hold are called inertial reference frames, such as the Earth. How can we be sure a reference is inertial or not? Any reference frame that moves with constant velocity relative to an inertial reference frame is also an inertial reference frame. Mass. What is mass? Mass is a measure of the inertia of an object. The more mass an object has, the greater the force needed to give it a particular acceleration. It is harder to start it moving from rest or to stop it when it is moving, or to change its velocity sideways out of a straight line path. What's the difference between mass and weight? Mass is a property of an object itself. However, weight is a force. It is a force of gravity acting on an object. An object weighs only one sixth on the moon as much as it does on the Earth. Newton's first law states that if no net force is acting on an object, it remains at rest, or if moving, it continues moving with constant speed in a straight line. But what happens if a net force is exerted on an object? Everyday experience can answer this question. We perceive that the velocity will change, or the object will accelerate. Newton's second law makes clear the relationship between acceleration and force. It can be summarized as follows. 
the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the net force acting on it and is inversely proportional to its mass. The direction of the acceleration is in the direction of the net force acting on the object. As an equation, it can be written A equals sigma F divided by M. We rearrange this equation to the familiar statement of Newton's second law sigma f equals to ma, where vector a stands for acceleration, scalar m for the mass, and sigma f for the net force. The symbol sigma stands for sum of, so sigma f means the vector sum of all forces adding on the object. Newton originally stated his second law in terms of momentum, the product of P equals to mv. The rate of change of momentum of an object is equal to the net force applied to it. Expressed in calculus, that is, Net force equals the derivative of momentum P with respect to time T. This derivative splits into two terms. One is the change in mass times velocity V. Another term is mass times the acceleration. A low speed movement the mass of, of an object does not change with time. So we have the net force equals ma. In metric system, the unit for force is Newton. One Newton is equal to one kilogram times meter per second square. Newton's second law is a law of forces instantaneous interaction. It tells us force is the cause of motion. Second, this law is only suitable for the inertial reference frame and the particles or particle-like objects. To solve problems with it, a Free body diagram needed to be drawn. Newton's second law can be expressed in component forms. The acceleration component along a given axis is caused only by the sum of the force components along that same axis, and not by force components along any other axis. Newton's theorem states that whenever one object exerts a force on a second object, the second exerts an equal and opposite force on the first. We tend to associate forces with active bodies such as humans animals, engines, or moving objects like a hammer. It is difficult for us to see how an inanimate object arrest such as a wall or a desk can exert a force. The explanation lies in the fact that every material, no matter how hard, is elastic. A stretched rubber band can exert a force on a board of paper and send it flying across the room. Other materials may not stretch as easily as rubber, but they do stretch when a force is applied to them. 
just as a stretched rubber band exerts a force, so does a stretched or compressed wall in desk. What exerts is a force on a car? A common answer is that the engine makes the car move forward. From the perspective of the Newton's third law, the engine makes the wheels go around. The tires exert a force on the ground. The friction force as a reaction exerted by the ground on the tire drives the car moving forward. What propels the rocket forward? A common misconception is that rockets accelerate because the gases rushing out the back of the engine push against the ground or the atmosphere. It is not true. What happens instead is that a rocket exerts a strong force on the gases, expelling them, and the gases exert an equal and opposite force on the rocket. It is this latter force that propels the rocket forward. Thus, a space vehicle travels in empty space by firing its rockets in the direction opposite to that in which it needs to accelerate.